Okay, what's up folks, this is Eric. It is December the 12th, 2023, and it's 9.51 p.m. Ah, well, the time doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that the stock made uh, new highs, new weekly highs. Well, not all-time highs, but at least for this week, it made uh, a weekly high. So, looking pretty good. Let's dive right into it. Okay, all right, so this is SPY. This is the five-minute time frame. Let's go to the weekly time frame and this is the weekly time frame you can see that uh, none other than the end or the beginning of 22 the end of 21 um, was higher than what it is now I mean you know those couple weeks so in order to break all-time highs the spot just has to break this block okay it is already right here so not bad but We've been pretty bullish here the last couple of uh, last couple of days, as you can see there. Well, here's the weekly. Let's go to the daily. All right, so here's the daily. Okay, so some bullish candles. We had uh, kind of an inside candle there, uh, and then almost an outside candle, but not quite. Um, and then three nice, decent sized candles, all in the same direction all you know almost shaven but looking pretty good all right so let's go to the five minute time frame this is what was traded today on december the 12th and um so here we took out the pre-market just like i showed you yesterday and let's see here all right so you can see that we're still in an uptrend right so uh here is the vwap and then here are your moving averages if you could just draw a general line going through the middle, kind of like a regression channel. Let's see, uh, where do we have a regression line? It's a regression channel. Let's do that. This is a regression channel. Dang on it, if it ain't identical to what I just drew. See, my eyes are amazing. My eyes, I can see this, I can see this thing see it and these uh top and bottom of the lines are the s the two sd two standard deviation below and two standard deviation above so we can get out of this oh get out of this and then so that's the five minute time frame now pretty much what i want to do and did it on another chart. I'm gonna want to get rid of this. Like I said, I've been working recently on just being able to draw these things without the computer, just so I know exactly what it's doing. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna move it to my move it to my tablet. Here is okay. So just paste that. Yep, there we go. All right, I'm gonna lock that. And then, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna zoom in here. Like I said, I've already kind of looked at. It. I've already studied for studied for the day. So what happened was the stock moved up. Ooh. Right, the stock move up up had a little bit of a rest and then it moved up again and then it had like a 50 percent retracement moved up same leg 50 percent retracement moved up same leg 50 percent retracement now that's three times right so that's one two three times now on this fourth time it moved up a good little bit and then when it retraced it came back down here. Okay. See? This is number four. Okay. Let's start over. <laughs> okay. All right. So, there we go. 
last chance at this guy. Last chance. Let's save this a little bit smaller. About 30. Alright, so moved up. Well, that doesn't feel like 30. again 50% retracement up again 50% retracement up again 50% retracement that is one two three moves and then on that uh, fourth move it went up a good little bit came back down to that level and then it just kind of made uh, lower highs and higher lows and then it finally dropped down to this level here drop down to this level here Okay, and then wick back through and then drop back down to oh, drop back down to the bottom of that consolidation zone All right and then right there okay so then it moved up over and then it dropped to the top of the consolidation zone da, 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 right there and then it moved over and then it dropped or it moved to where we typically expect to see these stocks go, which is the uh, the high just prior or the base that was created that it moved over top of. So it's something like this. And from there, it moved on up, right? Okay. So. I like to color these. Boom. 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 Doop. 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 Alright. Light the colors. Okay, so that's pretty much what you have. Alright, so if we had to draw it on the chart, we can see that it looks something like we get that first rest there moving up. We get a uh, second pull back you see it comes back to this zone and it moves up it comes back you know these are some pretty deep retracements and maybe that's why it continued to go up so high in the day because these retracements are pretty deep typically you would expect that when the chart moves up typically you would expect that when the stock moves up and then makes a rest and then goes up and over it would only go to this range here up uh, that's ugly. But only go to this range here. Mm. Come on, make it pretty for me. Got. Mm -mm. I don't give up. Unfortunately, guys, I do not. I do not give up. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this. It goes to that range there. It goes to that range, and then it keeps on going up. So, uh, what these stocks are doing? Is these stocks are dropping down here which is like i said a much deeper retracement and i guess that's okay and maybe that's the reason why i continue to move up the entirety of the day because there was a uh it was continuing to capture more and more uh, long shares okay so like i said after it moved up and deep retracement up deep retracement up came back down this time it did kind of set in that range okay and then it consolidated or you would say accumulated wicked Capture those longs there that were a little bit afraid, feeling like that was a top. Why did they feel like that was a top? Uh, let's go back to let's go back to our other screen to see why that might have been a top. This right here might have been a top because uh, there, zoom out. Just for simplicity's sake, eat that. Eat that. Hmm. Might take us way back into time. All right, so this price level is 462.79. Um, you know what? I think there was uh, something on the pre market. And usually when I'm trading, I do have the pre market open, I have the pre market visible. Uh, just for uh, this technical analysis, I don't. 
So on the pre-market, uh, this really didn't do much on the pre-market. I mean, maybe hit this area in here on the pre-market. I don't think that that's, that looks very menacing. This looks a little bit more menacing here or here, right? And this uh, circle here lines up to this area. So that's cool. This one lines up to this area. So that's cool. And then this one, uh, it doesn't really do much for that top. But, um, okay. All right, so let's go back to flow. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's that. Uh, let's, yeah, we'll go back to this here and I'll show you where I made my trades at. So I was ultimately somewhat profitable. So my total for the day, uh, $153, right? So I traded it a lot, but I'm still in the learning phase. But to make $153 is much better than what I typically do, which is come home with zero. All right. Um, all my trades. Starting here. All right, so we won't go over all these, obviously, but um, just kind of get an idea of what I was doing. And I'll tell you where I could have done better. All right, so this is what I was doing. Uh, at the first part of the day, I was actually trying to, I, think I was actually trying to go long because I was, I was working with the futures First part of the morning and you know it ran up quite a bit the futures and then it had a retracement so i had a pretty good feeling that there was quite a bit of strength there so i was just i was looking for those bottoms we just talked about this the other day how when looking for the longs you end up getting in at the wrong time which technically instead of me getting in longs at the first part of the day um and i do like to i guess most people would call it scout. I do like to scout, so um, that's hence the numerous trades. But I was in the wrong direction, right? So even if I was to look at this from the pre-market, I should have looked at this. Dot 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 dot. Ooh, there's a peak. Dot 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 dot. There's a peak. Boom. I should not really have been going long until after we cross this trend line okay and that's one of my criteria for entering trades is to that it has to cross the trend line the break of the trend line so if if we're going long it has to cross the ascending or the descending resistance if we're going short then we need to cross the um the ascending support so and then the other thing that i'll note that i should have done better was um look at the look at the five minute time frame so i th i think this is what i'm going to end up doing so i want to take this out take this uh it's the regular market hours so that looks weird oh those are the circles that i drew i think okay so I believe what I'm gonna to have to end up doing, for one, if we left the pre-market in there, this was all this right here, remember it was still under that descending trend line. So this wouldn't have been traded as a long anyway. But then two, I believe, because I do like to do the scouts, I'm on such a small time frame that I kind of almost have, well, I'm, I'm still working on developing my own strategy and I'm seeing it more and more but it looks something like this. It looks something like the larger time frame, whether it be the five minute or the 15 minute, whatever, the large time frame that stock has to be moving over, certainly over like the 200 EMA, but over the, the nine EMA, the 15 EMA, right? So once we made it over this nine to 15 EMA, then it started looking a lot more promising even on the 15 minute chart. So let's do this. 
Um, we're gonna go back to the uh, to the open of the day where it dropped down. So, here we go. Okay. All right. Okay. So, and you know, I think it's probably somewhat obvious that this is where I took most of my trades at, you know, this screen up here, the tick screen is where I took my trades at, um, because I've got all my lines drawn, right? So like I said, I was, um, making sense of the idea that once the chart crosses the descending trend line, then that's when you could get in for a, uh, a long position. But what I'm what I realized that I really need to be doing is getting in in a long position. So, it, so it's got to be multifactorial. So, and it will probably limit how many trades I take. But so let's look at it this way. All right. So one minute time frame on the spy over here. What have we got? Something's always getting out of whack. 24 hours. Scaling automatic. This. 24 hours scaling. It's automatic. Close. Okay, so now we go back, and now everything is going to be synced up to this little dip in here. So that dip should be no good, right? Shouldn't be trading that dip. Uh, I still need to work on the scaling over here. So, all right, I'll do that later. Um, so if you see over here on the five minute time frame, well, for one, we're under this descending trend line. So, for one, I think we need to at least on the five minute time frame, we'll get over the uh, any kind of descending trend line. All right, so then that'll put us into action once we get out here. All right, so. Um, we shouldn't step in until we got to close over like this 15 EMA. All right. So after we get over the 15 EMA, now what we got to wait for is um, some type of pullback. So in the, there's several things going on there. One is that in order to get a pullback, you need to stop moving forward. Right. So this is a nice bullish candle. This is a nice bullish candle. This is a nice bullish candle. This one starts retracing. So I think at this point is where we start looking for our entry because we need to get in at a pullback. The bullish, uh, bullish nature lets us know that we have, um, that we're moving, what direction we're moving in, that we're trending. Okay. And the pullback, yes, I know it can be dangerous. Uh, you know, feel like you're catching a fallen knife and everything, but the, the bullish move let us know that at least we are somewhat in a trend. Plus, we have the uh, confirmation of the moving average. However, you know, lagging indicator. Yeah, 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 I get it. Also, this would be a little bit scary in here just because of the simple, simple fact that uh, on this date, we did have this height here, right? So we had this, this wick range here that could have gave us pause. All right. So anyway, we moved up to that range. Let's see what this pullback looks like. So we're going to go in here. Okay. So once we in, once we're in there, that is right in this area on the one minute time frame. So on the one minute time frame, huh? How does it look? Does it look good? Does it look bad? Well, it's trying to bounce on this 15 EMA. So not bad, but a safer place to bounce at would have been down here. Would have been all the way down here because we because we know that we know that area. We know this. We know this base right here. We know that base. So it didn't go down quite that low, right? So do you take the entry or not? That is the question. 
All right, but so in this range here, what's happening on the uh, 15 second time frame? On the 15 second time frame, now we're down in here. So on the 15 second time frame, we're getting this descending trend here. something like that not much of a trend but it definitely found a horizontal nature to the um to the movement okay um and then there is a look there is actually a little bit of a base right here right here see that there's a little bit of a base right here and the 15 second time frame was able to catch that. The one minute time frame was not able to catch that. And that's why you have multiple time frames open. So this is part of the criteria that I put together earlier when I was trading today. So uh, even going back and looking at it this uh, tonight gives me more. Um, just makes me feel like that this might be an actual workable trading strategy. I just have to just have to continue to look at it and um, see how it works. Okay, so what it looks like is we have a move to a price level. So one, we have a trend, which we know that we had based on this, based on this. And then two, we have the pullback, which we know that it's a pullback just because it was at a high and now it's made some made some lows from the high, right? Some lower highs and some lower lows. Okay, and then two, and then uh, I guess the third one, is that the third one? Yeah. All right, then the third one is that that pullback is actually to a significant area. By significant, we mean that it's at a price level that uh, showed some hesitation, reservation before, okay? And likely that it won, right? So stock moved up, showed hesitation, and then bulls won, okay? So we just wanna see that when the price comes back to here, bulls win again. And then even here, you see that there's a bit of a hesitation there, right? And so when price moved up, it came right back, it came right down to that area and then moved up. That's great. Uh, that's not the first, that's not the most immediate one that we're looking for though. Uh, we're looking for something, a, li a little deeper retracement. Although, you know, this might be something to consider taking. Anyway, um, I think we couldn't take that because that is the height of the move so far. So that would be this area. And we're not taking any of those moves up initially. We're waiting for some significant sign of retracement. Okay. And so then that would be, yeah, when it, at least when it comes to this level this level and then here we're seeing that it's definitely at a um, at a base okay so we have a base we have price retracement there we have uh, a little bit of volume so i like to see this volume a little bit higher okay so let's just go ahead and open this up okay so we have this descending trend line we got the trend line. We have the uh, little bit of volume down here coming down, meeting the meeting. So the 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 shorts or the short sellers or the sellers are meeting the buyers. So we have the volume. We have the break of the descending trend line. Um, and then there was one more. Well, we have the price level. I think one more that I was looking for was volatility, which you can see during market hours, but um, you can't see that right now. I don't think I was recording then. I'll, I'll look back on. I'll look back and see if I recorded this time frame. Let's see if I can play that for you guys. Um, ten twelve. 12 and then yeah a nice move up from there so i think all those things into play is what i'm looking for for a good trade okay 
All right, so I think that's enough of the analysis part. Let me, um, give me one moment. I'm gonna see if I can pull up a, um, see if I can pull up the video from today. All right, hang tight. Okay, and so I do have it. I did. I was recording. So let me see if let me see what that time was that we were looking for. Time that we're looking for of interest was ten thirteen. So what I'm looking for is the speed of speed of motion, the speed of movement, the volatility, uh, and if there was any special be it ask um, motion or movement that was going on. So 10, 10, 12. is happening now it's, it's about that no it just happened we're getting on into 10 14 there i think this is the area that we're looking for right course that's where I'm getting out at where the smart money is getting in right I was trying to short it I thought it took me out I don't know I was longing I was longing it but but I got out and that was a perfect spot where it moved up Right? Isn't that right? How come I don't have, how come I don't see the time? On, usually the time is hanging out up here somewhere. Or maybe I have it cut out. Uh, I have to be sure to put that back in. Well, I didn't see anything crazy about like the volatility or anything like that. Let's, uh. And see, I was making some documentations along the way. Oh, I was doing that on the tick chart. Hang on, let's go back to let's go back to trade station to see what happened on the tick chart. All right, so this is 15 second time frame on the tick chart. This is where, like I said, this is where I was trading at. This is where I was making all my notes. So go back to 10, 12, right in here. Okay, so at 10, 12, there was a huge amount of ass that came in. Good to know. And I did, I do recall seeing that now that I think about it uh, in some, in a few other places, I do recall seeing a high number of ass. Okay, so yeah, and I think that's what, that's maybe why I wrote that. Let's see, what was I writing in other places? I think that might have been some of the criteria I was looking for to enter. So breaking the trend line, which this obviously broke a trend line, right? Breaking the trend line, a high amount of ass, breaking the trend line. And then we could also say that this was this came to a price level, right? Because we know that from looking at the other chart, this came down to the price level. 
broke the trend line, high amount of ask, and oh, and it had uh, volume right here too, right? So, so it had all those things going for it. So in that cluster, that was a good trade to take. All right, where else did we see? So here. Here I shorted and I got out right at the bottom. That was a great play. Um, got short there too. Yeah, short it got right out about midway down. So I was I was I I felt like I was figuring things out fairly well as the day moved on. And then I think I got back into it and then I lost a bit and then I gained it back. So um, I'm still I'm still figuring it out, but. And I think that's how I know that I'm moving through this process is when I can make money on both longing and shorting on both the long leg and the pullbacks in whatever market, if it's bullish or if it's bearish, if I can, if I can capture the market in, you know, both directions, then I I've got it figured out. So I know I don't have it quite figured out just yet, but I feel like I'm, making some headway. All right, so we had high ass there. So here, if you were to consider this to be a good move up, you would say, oh, but there's some higher ass, the red coming in here. Uh, no significant volume though. If anything, the volume is right here. No significant volume down here. This was just really aggressive here. Um, high bids coming in there. All right, so this this would have been a good potential place to get in, right? You see, I drew that uh, descending trend line, so it would have been a good idea to get in here, and I did, right? I got in here, 200 shares, and I got out up here. And I think I got out up here because this is just under that new high. We don't want to tempt the market. Right, we don't want to tempt the market because we know that uh, we know that there's supply there, so it could always pull back and keep coming back. So, like I said, I got in there, got out there. That was good. Um, Short it here. No, no, I think here I, I was attempting to go long. Okay, yeah. So here I shorted, and that was a good play. And then here, I don't know why I was going long again. Here I was going long. Maybe I felt like it was ranging, about to range in a channel. And so I, here I went long and then I got out by down here. I got out here. And again, this is another one of those places where exactly where you get out is where the market moves up or it moves up. Um, and here, I think here, when I got out, instead of just getting out, I did a reverse position. So I exchanged my 200 long shares for 200 short shares and thinking that it's going to start going down, but it didn't go down. It went back up. And so then I had to exit my position by here. Okay. So that's a red dot. That's a lost trade. So, um, and I figured that it was going to keep going up because once it broke this descending trend line, like I say, that's a good sign that it's going in that direction. So we knew that it was time to get out, that that was trouble. At least I got out though. Usually the old Eric would have stayed in and just watched it deteriorate. But I'm, I'm taking my, I'm taking my L's. I'm taking the W's with the L's. So we're getting there. Uh, here, if we were to say that this was like the optimal place to enter or even here, then I don't know how we would figure that other than this line right here. I think I went back after I got out here. I said, well, why did it move up there? How come I lost this trade? And so I looked here and looked back to the left. That was this line here. That was this, it retested 
on this pullback. And if you look at this pullback, if you look at this pullback or if you look at this base, you say, oh wow, well it pulled back to here and it had a pretty decent strong move up. Pulled back to here, it had a pretty decent strong move up. So where these things pull back to and they have a strong move up, that's a good place that you might want to get in and go in that direction, go back in that direction again. So lesson learned, lesson learned. I'll try that for tomorrow. Okay. Um, yep, same thing here, right? We have the descending trend line. Okay. We had the wackiness going on here. We talked about that yesterday. I saw it here again today and I think I was in a trade and I decided to stay in it for that reason. Was I? I don't know what happened to this trade here. Yeah. Is that one of those times? Yeah, this craziness here, I don't know. Yeah, we saw this craziness here. We saw it here, and then we saw it here, and I was thinking that it was going to just go up and continue to go up, but it uh, moved down, and I went ahead and um, got out, took an L, but I did get back in down here and, and made a little bit of that money back right there. I think another thing that I was kind of considering was that at least on the 15 tick time frame, that if the, if the chart is over the 200 EMA, then look for longs. If it's under the 200 EMA, then look for shorts. See how all this is over the 200 EMA and it just keeps going up. Um, then look for long. So just look for these pullbacks or look for these continuations. Look for these pullbacks um, to break descending resistance and then take that entry there and go. Uh, and then once it gets under the 200 EMA, then you want to go ahead and look for shorts. So once it gets under the 200 EMA, uh, it's breaking down. So it got under here, it did pull back, and sometimes we see this and we see it go over, but for the most part, when it's under the 200 EMA, it's breaking down. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to look on the other time frames for confluence on that, but like I say, even here, it's under. Don't necessarily have to look for shorts all the time. Um, definitely look for those other signs of confluence, and if it's at a price level, then you have to consider that it's going to just trend sideways and hold until the 200 EMA comes down to it, which is what happened here, and then it move up. So yeah, that's literally what happened here. Moved under, moved over, moved under. It's not really, I mean, it is moving down, so you could continue shorting it as long as you got the high, as long as you got the high, get the high, you could continue shorting it. But I mean, let's face it. it finds his bottom here at around uh, 462.40, and then it just consolidates sideways. Boom, 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 boom. It just keeps consolidating sideways until the 200 EMA comes down to it, and then it shoots up. And that's one of the things, that's why we consider that uh, price action is definitely a relationship between time and price, because uh, what price can't do, time can assist with. So anyway, um, this is right at 39 minutes, so I am going to hop off of here and I, I hope somebody picked up something from this, this little bit of a uh, combo, this little bit of technical analysis. I know I did, and um, we're going to learn a little bit more on tomorrow because we are in the charts, right guys? All right, this is Eric. I'm out. Peace.